All right, what we're now going to do is we're now going to try and understand the last two curves that are on this, that are, that are on this uh, market structure uh, set of graphs, okay? And they are average variable cost and average total cost. Now, in order to understand them, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and fill in this table, finish it up with the costs, and uh, calculate average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average total cost. And just so that you remember, average fixed cost is equal to fixed cost divided by quantity, right? So here, 55 divided by 1, that's 55, okay? And then average variable cost is variable cost divided by quantity. So that's 38 divided by 1. That's going to be 38 right here. And then average total cost can be calculated in two different ways. You can add average fixed cost and average variable cost to get average total cost. Or you can calculate average total cost by doing total cost divided by quantity. So for example, we could take the total cost at 93 divide it by the quantity 1, and average total cost is 93. And now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of these. All right, so I've gone ahead and filled in uh, the calculations for average fixed cost and average variable cost and average total cost. Now, uh, there's a couple things I want to point out about average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average total cost before we look at the shapes of the curves. The first thing I want to point out is this. I want you to notice that because, well, for, the first thing I want you to notice is that average fixed cost is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, right? We, it starts at 55, and down here at a, a quantity of 10, it's at 5.5. And as quantity gets larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, uh, it's going to get even smaller and smaller and smaller. When quantity gets to 155, divided by 100 is 0.55. And so effectively, what's happening to average fixed cost is as quantity uh, gets larger, as quantity gets larger, average fixed cost approaches, oops, approaches zero. It's eventually going to approach zero. And because average fixed cost is approaching zero, that means that uh, average variable cost is actually going to approach average total cost, okay? Because remember, average total cost is average variable cost plus average fixed cost. And if this is zero, then average variable cost plus zero still equals average variable cost. And that means this major concept that I think that you need to write down is that as quantity increases average variable cost gets closer to average total cost. The curves themselves are actually going to get closer and closer and closer and closer as quantity increases. Why? Because average fixed cost is getting closer and closer to zero. All right, now what I want to try and explain to you are these two statements. The first one says that when marginal cost is less than average variable cost, average variable cost will decrease, meaning it'll, it'll become a smaller and a smaller number. But when marginal cost is larger than average variable cost, average variable cost will increase. Let me show you on here, and then I'm going to show you mathematically why this is true. All right, so look at this. At a unit of 1, our average variable cost is 38, and our marginal cost is 38. Okay? Um, actually, that's not a very good example. Let's move on to unit number 2. At unit, unit 2, average variable cost is 37, and marginal cost is 36. And since marginal cost is less than average variable cost, average variable cost is going to decrease. And it sure does. Look, it goes from 37 down to 36. Now at this unit, marginal cost is still smaller than average variable cost. So that means that average variable cost will continue to decrease. And it does. Marginal cost is still smaller than average variable cost, so it's going to get smaller. It goes down to 35. But now they're the same. And when they're the same, that means that it's, that it's not going to change at all. 
But look at, let's look at the next one here. Now average variable cost is 35.5 and marginal cost is 38. Now at unit six, marginal cost is larger than average variable cost, and that means that average variable cost is going to become larger, and it sure is. It goes up to 36.29. Marginal cost is 41, still larger, so average variable cost goes up to 37.25. Marginal cost is still larger, so average variable cost is going to go up, still larger, and it's going to go up. Okay. Now I'm going to show you mathematically why that happens. All right, so we know that a couple things. First of all, we know that average variable cost is equal to variable cost divided by quantity. Something else that we know that, we, that I showed you earlier in this video is that variable cost is equal to the sum of all marginal costs, right? So variable cost is equal to marginal cost of the first unit plus marginal cost of the second unit plus the marginal cost of the third unit, uh, et cetera, right? How, up to however many units we produce. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this summation and I'm going to put it up here in, average, in, the, in this formula here. So this is going to be the same thing as divided by quantity, marginal cost, of one plus marginal cost of two plus marginal cost of the third plus the marginal cost of anything else that's included in the average variable cost. And however many numbers are up here, that's what the quantity is going to be. So if the quantity, whatever the quantity is, let's say quantity sub n, this will go all the way up to plus the marginal cost of the nth unit, okay? And technically this wouldn't be a q, this would be an n, okay? And so uh, what we're calculating here is an average. So if we go all the way back to the beginning of this particular video, I want to remind you that we reviewed how to calculate an average, right? And when we reviewed that, do you remember that what I said was that if the next thing that you, if you, if you calculate the average and you add one more thing on, your n is going to go up by one, your denominator goes up by one, and if the number that you add on here, the next one that you add on in the numerator, that if it is larger than the previous average, then the overall average will go up. If it's smaller than the previous average, then the overall average will go down. And since what we're adding on to calculate average variable cost, since what we're adding on is a marginal cost, that means that if marginal cost is smaller than the average, then the new average will go down. It'll be smaller. But if the new thing you add on, marginal cost, is larger than the average, then your new average will go up. Similarly, I didn't write it down, but we can also say that if the, if the thing you're adding on, if marginal cost is the same as the average, if it's equal to the average variable cost, then that means average variable cost will not change at all. It'll stay the same. And you can see here, when average variable cost is, sorry, here, 35, and we're adding on a 35, average variable cost is still about 35. It didn't really change. All right, now we're going to say the exact same thing about average total cost. We're going to say, just like with average variable cost, that when marginal cost is less than average total cost, that means average total cost is going to go down. It's going to decrease. But when marginal cost is larger than average total cost, average to total cost is going to increase. It's going to go up. And we can look at the schedule here, and we can see that precisely. So you can see here, here's marginal cost and here's average total cost, right? And you can see that for all these numbers leading up to about 44, marginal cost is less than average total cost. And since 38 is less than 93, average total cost is going down, all the way down to over here. Look, here's 41, marginal cost is 41, and average total cost is 44.67, or excuse me, 44.14, that's, that's larger. And so look, it's very small, but you can see that average total cost went down by 0.02. So 
as long as marginal cost is smaller than average total cost, average total cost is going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But look at over here. At nine units, marginal cost is 47, and average total cost is 44.4. Since marginal cost is larger, look here what happens to average total cost. It goes up to 45. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you mathematically why that happens. All right, so we know that average total cost is equal to total cost divided by quantity. We also know that total cost is equal to fixed costs plus variable costs. And so we could rewrite this as fixed costs plus variable costs divided by quantity. We also know that variable cost is equal to uh, marginal cost of the first unit plus marginal cost of the second unit plus marginal cost of the third unit all the way up to the marginal cost of the nth unit, right? So that's the variable cost for the nth unit. And so we can go up here just to this portion of the average total cost calculation, and we can say fixed cost plus variable, or excuse me, we would say variable cost, but we're gonna put in what variable cost is equal to, which is the marginal cost of the first, plus the marginal cost of the second, plus dot, 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 up to the marginal cost of the nth unit. All over n, and n would be the actual quantity. And so, what you can see here is that when we calculate average total cost, we're adding on one more marginal cost at a time. And again, if we go back to the rule, if we go back to the rule about at whatever adding on one more number, if that number is larger than the average, then the overall average goes up. But if that number is smaller than the overall average, that the overall average will then go down. And that's why when marginal cost is smaller than average total cost, average total cost will decrease. But eventually, eventually, marginal cost, because it's increasing, eventually marginal cost will become larger than average total cost, and it will uh, and then average total cost will begin increasing. Now you may wonder why in the world am I telling you about the relationship between marginal cost and average variable and average total cost? Well now what we're going to do is we are going to sketch the graphs of average variable cost and average total cost and you're going to see how they interact with the marginal cost curve. Alright, so all of this talk about the average variable cost and average total cost comes down to this basic summary, okay? Is that average variable cost, here's what the curve does. First it decreases, it has a, it has a negative slope, first it goes down, then it increases, then it slopes up. So it's got like a U shape to it. Now here's the interesting thing. The lowest point of the average variable cost curve is equal to the marginal cost. So it's actually going to intersect the marginal cost curve at the lowest point. Let me prove that to you right here in this table. Look, first it's going to decrease. First average variable cost is going to decrease. Then it's going to increase, right? And the place where it switches between decrease and increase, it is equal to marginal cost. See that? Similarly, average total cost is exactly the same thing. First it decreases, then it increases, and its lowest point is equal to marginal cost. So look at this. Average total cost here is decreasing all the way up to here, and then it starts increasing, right? And its lowest point, 44.12, is equal to marginal cost. And I know that that's just, oh, this is 44 and this is 44.12, but um, that's, that's basically the same thing as equal for the purposes of this example, okay? The last thing that I want to say is this, is that average variable, excuse me, uh, yeah, average variable cost is, that curve is always below average total cost. It's always smaller than 
And here's proof of that. Look, the average variable cost number is always smaller than the average total cost number, always smaller. But here's the interesting thing. We said this before. Average variable cost gets closer to average total cost as quantity increases. See, look at this. I want you to remember that average fixed cost is the difference between average total cost and average variable cost. And so this is a very large difference here, 55. But as we get down here, the difference is, move this, the difference is 5.5. So the difference goes from 55 and goes down to 5.5. So these two curves are getting, the average variable cost is below the average total cost, but they're getting closer and closer and closer to each other as they increase because they eventually both start increasing. And now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and draw them. All right, so here is our coordinate plane. We've got our quantity, we've got our dollars per unit. And here's basically what the average variable cost and the average total cost curves are gonna look like. We'll have the average variable cost curve that's gonna kinda go down and then it'll go up like this. That'll be our average variable cost. And then, now I wanna show you something. Remember, at the lowest point of the average variable cost curve right there, that is the, that's the minimum, that is the lowest point. That is the point through which, let's draw a straight line here as best as I can, okay? That's the point through which the marginal cost curve is gonna pass. See, to the left of this at a smaller quantity, marginal cost is smaller than average variable cost and therefore average variable cost is getting smaller. But over here on the right side, marginal cost is larger than average variable cost and so that means average variable cost is getting larger. Then, average total cost is gonna do the exact same thing but it's gonna be above the average variable cost curve. So let's say that we're over here. So it's gonna do this. And at the minimum point there, I can make that better than that. At this minimum point, the marginal cost curve is gonna pass right through the average total cost curve. And then lastly, you can see that the average variable cost curve is getting closer to the average total cost curve. It's getting closer and closer and closer. Over here, they're very far away from each other but as quantity increases, the average variable cost curve and the average total cost curve are getting closer and closer and closer to each other. And what we're gonna do now is I am going to show you a graph, we're gonna create a graph of uh, all five curves on one coordinate plane.